Hello and welcome to the Corona Yoga Challenge. Today is day 86. Cases are slowing, so that is good. Or slowing, really slow. We like that. Please make sure that you check my website to make sure that you're keeping safe and adapting as you need to. Do subscribe by hitting the little picture, of round white picture of me somewhere on the screen, if you want. Uh, and we're going to come into all fours, so if you bring yourself into a comfortable all fours position. So from your all fours position, you're going to be sliding your hips forwards and back. So nice smooth movement, easing your hips back and forwards. Follow your breath, so allow the breath to start slow, to start to ease. And then have a little bit of a move around, let your body just, or the back of your waist move up or down or side to side. Let it do the movements that it would like to make to just ease out. And then bring yourself back and into all fours. You're going to bring yourself up so you come into a little bit of a dog pose. So we're lifting the hips high. You're going to take one leg through the space between your hand and your other foot. And you're just going to start to ease your foot out. So you're going to start to stretch your leg out to the side and you're drawing your hips down. So you're going to get really good stretch for this one. And then slide your leg back out. Come into dog pose again. And then to the opposite side. So first of all, just pop your foot onto the floor. Slide it up to, the, if you like, the top corner. Sink your hips down. Weights even between your hands. Just allow yourself to ease out. And bring yourself back and into dog pose. Stretch up for a moment. And the knees come down. Rest your head for a moment. Notice how that feels on your body. So notice how do you feel right now, just as you're resting. And then we're going to come up to do that one more time if it felt good and if you would like to. So hands are on the floor. You're from all fours. You're bringing yourself up and into dog pose. One foot comes through the space. You might just take it out a little bit to the sides and let your hips come down a little bit. The more fun and more trickiness you get is to send your foot up towards the direction of your hands. And then you can slide yourself down and towards the floor. Bring yourself back and into dog pose. Stretch out nice and evenly for a moment. And then the opposite side. Thank you. Which is good fun. <laughs> Bring yourself back and into dog all fours. Sorry, into dog pose. Stretch up and out through the hips. And then let your knees come down. And rest your head down. So it's a good way to waken up the outsides of the legs and get yourself that feeling of being a little bit more alive and alert. You're going to bring yourself back and into all fours and we're going to walk ourselves up and into a standing forward bend. So hands are moving back towards your knees, hips are lifting up towards the ceiling, head is just folding forwards and you can let your arms rest onto your thighs. Make sure that you're really comfortable here so you might want to be up higher up so that your lower back is comfy and then bend through your knees stretch all the way up and overhead and then bring your hands down to your heart we're going to come to a standing position now so we're going to come to a pose which is called Shiva's dance which is a nice pose according to me <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to move that a bit again um, so Shiva's dance, you're just going to start with both feet settled comfortably, evenly onto the floor. You're going to take your hands out to the side and you can let your thumb and first finger gently join if you would like and gently extend it out through the fingertips. You're going to lift your foot up and you're going to start to extend it across your body. And as you send it across your body, it's as if you're stamping down with your active foot. So the foot that's lifted, this one, Needs to stay a little bit alive, a little bit alert. And then lift yourself up, let yourself come back to standing. And to the opposite side. So fingertips join, shoulders release down. Leg steps up and over. And then you can sink yourself slightly into it. Press down through your standing foot to bring yourself back to standing. Back to even feet. What we're going to do now is we're going to have the option of the standing foot, the supporting foot, the toes coming slightly out the way on that one. <coughs> Pardon me. Means you get a nice wide movement through the hips and the thighs. 
So foot's coming down onto the floor and toes are facing out the way. Hands are coming up, shoulders relaxed down. So this back leg is going to step round the front to be our lifted leg. So from here, sink down through the knees, gently extend into the foot. And the story of this is Shiva is standing on bad things. That's a very simple version, quick version of the story. So you can imagine that you're just pressing gently away with your foot with anything you don't want in your life. Bring yourself back up to standing, back to feet, settle straight forwards. And then we're going to do the opposite side. So thumb and fingers join, fingers extend away if comfortable. You're going to have your opposite foot forward. So, sorry, um, as your foot comes down onto the floor, toes come out towards the side. We're going to take our weight into the front foot. So you could just be balancing so that you are just lightly on that front foot and the back leg stays on the floor. Back leg can lift up, can come over, can step into it and you can sit or bend your leg to set yourself into it if you would like. Get that feeling of steady, even and strong. And then bring yourself back up to standing. Back to both feet, settled, comfortable, straight forwards if possible. We're going to come down to the floor now. So if you want to bring yourself to sitting, and um, we're going to have our legs out in front. So yesterday we did bent up staff pose, so twisting round from here. Today we're going to have the option of taking the knees down towards the floor, but this is going to mean that we're going to be, have to be really mindful of the lower back. So the lower back needs that little lifting up through it. So you may, although we're having straighter legs, it may be that a little bit of bent knees is really good for your back. So when we're twisting particularly, the alignment of the spine is so important before we twist round. So don't compromise the lower back for knees being straighter. And if your knees are happy to be straight, just make sure you've got that little lift for so the Pelvic bones at the front are just slightly coming forwards and then the shoulders can just relax on top. You're going to have one hand on your leg, opposite hand on the floor, just ease yourself into the open space. Bring yourself back to the centre. Now we're going to come over to the opposite side. When you're doing this, trying to think about the feet being a little bit alive, so not tight and sharp and edgy, although that can be fun sometimes, <laughs> just, and not kind of like, ugh, sleepy. Try and think about just that little bit of steady energy throughout your whole body as you're doing this. Coming over to the opposite side, same thing, gently lifting up through the lower back as the pelvic bones come slightly forwards and then allowing the twisting movement to come up and through the spine. Bringing yourself back to the centre, and you're going to come to your first side again. So just easing round, the head can gently follow, but just smoothly, very, very smoothly. Bring yourself to the centre and to the opposite side. And then bring yourself back to the centre. You're going to bend your knees up, fold easy forwards over your legs, allow the back of the neck to extend. And then walk your hands up your legs to bring yourself up to sitting. We're going to do a little bit of breathing. So if you just want to bring yourself to a position where you can relax. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an easy breath in. And then we're going to do a little breath out. So that little pattern of long breath in and then the little sniffs out. Um, it's really important you're adapting it, so you might just take one little sniff out, You might your breath might be a different pattern to mine, it might go faster than mine. So please allow yourself to be natural, that's far more important than following what I'm doing, far more important in so many ways. Um, so first of all, kind of following your intuition about what feels right for you. So easy breath in. Breath in and out. Last breath in and out. Last 
let your breathing settle. So just let it be entirely natural for you. So my challenge for you, my challenge for you today is to do something nice for your feet. So it could be that you just stick them in a washing up bowl of water, in nice warm water, and let them have a little bit of a rest. It could be that you give them a massage. It could be, it made me think of a really funny thing that every so often I've done, where you interlink your toes, so one toe, then the other toe, then the other toe, and you try and interlink your toes. I'm not quite sure it's a nice thing. There we go. We've got really bizarre linked in toes now. So it's quite good because you can make extra space between each toe. It might not be a nice thing, but it could be a fun thing for you. It might be great. You might love it. Um, so yeah, do something nice for your feet. And your quote for the day is from Vanda Scarabella. Well, actually, it's not from Vanda, is it? The picture is from, uh, from Sandra Sabatini. So this is my Spirit of Yoga book, one of my faves. And this is a rather nice page here, Big Waves. And this here is Vanda Scaravelli who was a lovely yoga teacher. Um, and Sandra Sabatini, movements are like waves, you have to go with them. Movements are like waves, you have to go with them. She seems a very appropriate quote. Okie dokie. Have a super day, enjoy your day. And yeah, I hope you find a lot of peace and love.